brother, if you have a question, come on, man. Come on, you. I know you got a question. Like I said, don't think I'm raising my voice out of, I'm mean, I'm not mean. We just want the truth to come out to our people, that's all. We're your brothers. Come, 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 come. Yes, brother, come. Okay. We'll change the subject just for you then. What is it? The question is, how many generations, like, I've seen some videos, not of this camp, but other camps saying that Sicilians were, were Israelites. How many generations, how many generations of you go back and still be an Israelite? I'll explain it to you about the Sicilians. First off, during the slave trade, Anybody, like, and not just anybody, if they mix with the white man, how many generations does it go back? Okay, I understand. Uh, read uh, Deuteronomy uh, 28, I want 64 and then 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. Now, the Bible says that the Israelites would be scattered, correct? Now when we were scattered, give me Jeremiah 50 and 33. I'm going to show you about the bulk of us. The bulk of the Israelites. Jeremiah, I think it's chapter 50, verse 33. Tell me, tell me what it says. Is that together? Yes. Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 33. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together, and all that took them captives held them fast. Now according to the history, when you read about this, this the blacks that rolled Sicily and all that, a lot of them was pushed out of Portugal and areas and forced back throughout to Africa. And not many of them were sold to slaves over here. Okay? So now, trying to go back to about how far, is the Bible only gives you like three or four generations. Okay? But even that, you gotta be careful with. You understand? That's why this is a journey of faith. Give me that in John 10, about my sheep. Give me that. Some brothers teach that the Sicilians and the Irish are Israelites because they like white women. I'm telling you, that's what some of them do. Because when you look at their signs, those names ain't on there. But we understand that, yes, can some of our people be over there and come over here? Yes. Like you have some people like Mariah Carey. But she's Israel, right? Mariah Carey. Her father, I believe, is from Panama. He's black. And her mother's white. Then you got, uh, what's the other? Halle Berry. Halle Berry, who's... who's Mother's white, but his father's black. Vin Diesel. Okay. Vin Diesel is another one. Very light skin. So Alicia Keys is another one. Never go by skin complexion. What you got for me? John 10, read the verse for me. John 10 and uh let's see him up All right. John 10 and verse 6 27, sorry. And verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So according to this, what Christ is saying here, Christ said, My sheep hear my voice. Because in these last days, a lot of our genealogy is confused, correct? We only have, give me Romans 8 now. And we know that um, Romans, Romans, Romans 8. Okay, a lot of the, the genealogy, people can only go back so, so many generations. So it then comes the question, well, we can't prove who we are. That's why Deuteronomy 28 is there. That's why Lamentations 5 is there, 2nd Ezra 13, which prophesies what would happen to your people, my people, the Israelites. Where are you from? You're Judy, your father's black. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Why are you asking a question about this? I know you might have seen some videos. Like that's, that's what it was. That's what it was. They, but, got, they got a so-called scene in one of the camps in one yeah. of the video. <laughs> and, I'm telling you, <laughs> a lot of brothers we know, but they, a lot of them are, are trying to marry white women. Why? Because they cannot deal with the black or the Latin woman. Because they say the black woman and the Latin woman, what do they say about them? They're hard to deal with. They got big mouths, right? Let me show you something. Give me 1 Timothy 3 and 5. I'm going to show you about brothers that cannot deal with the black woman or the Latin woman. Okay, what's your name? Mark? Okay, Mark. All right, listen. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? You hear what God said? If you can't deal with your own house, your people, how can you deal with the church of God? That's what my brother said. I don't like the black woman no more. She got a big mouth. I don't like the Latin woman. She got a big mouth. I'm going to go get me a, 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 a white woman, a Sicilian. They're quiet. Or some of them say, I want a Chinese woman. She's quiet. She's submissive. You're not going to get it easy. You know why? 
because the most high, read it again. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, if you can't deal with your black woman or your Latin woman, how shall he take care of the house of, of the church of God? How can you deal with the church of God? How can you be a leader in the kingdom to come? You can't deal with a woman, but you want to be the leader with everybody. Shut the hell up. The Lord said he ain't dealing with brothers like that. Okay, you, you got kids? How many kids you got? One child. Okay. Now, you take care of them? Oh, he's 21, he's 21, he's 21 now. He's 21 now, okay. You did enough. He's on his own. <laughs> First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8. You celebrate Father's Day? Why don't you celebrate Father's Day? Let me hear. Oh, that's very good. You should not celebrate Father's Day. Father's Day is of the devil, just like Mother's Day. It's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. Okay, come on. First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8. But if any provide not for his, house, his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith. You're going to find a lot of Israelites on YouTube that you'll see. They don't take care of their women. They don't take care of their kids. But they're in the street just cursing everybody out. And you, we ain't even got to mention on that because you know who they are. Read it again. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he had denied the faith, and is worse than an infidel. You know what Christ said? Christ ain't dealing with those Israelites that do a deal like that. He said they're worse than an infidel, worse than unbelievers, worse than idolaters. If a man don't take care of his own house, your own house includes your wife and your children. You don't deal with that right? God said, I'm not dealing with you. A lot of these Israelites you see on YouTube, hypocrites. We know them, we love them, and we pray that they can repent get themselves together. They'll condemn us and say, y'all all about family, family, to hell with family. I'm sure you've seen some of the videos. They curse us out, but that's all good in the hood. Especially, especially me, right? Yeah, especially me. But I'm going to show you the right way. I'm going to show you, as a man of God, all the scriptures that speak about family, speak about responsibility. Because guess what? Give me Ephesians 5, 31, 32. I'm going to show you about marriage. You married? Okay. That's good. That's all right. That's all right. Give me Ephesians 5, 31 and 32. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife. So the Bible's talking about marriage, correct? For this cause shall a man... Uh, read it again. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife. And shall be joined to his wife. What you gonna find out of the Israelites? They don't obey that. You say, hey, yo, you got a wife? Yeah, I got a wife. Where's she at? Is she at home? Mm -hmm. And she lived down the block. Where you live? I live over there. She live in Chicago. I live in New York. That's out of order with God. Read it again. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife. You know what it means to be joined into his wife? Does that? Is that a, a hard saying to be joined into your wife? Is that that's easy, right? But you hear brothers go, oh no, it don't mean that my brother, because of this and because of that, she can live down into hell with the woman. That's what these, some of these Israelites do. Stay away from them. They're going to destroy you, destroy your life. Read it again. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. One mind. One flesh. This is a great mystery. Marriage, brother, Mark, marriage is a great mystery. Watch this. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Marriage represents Christ and the church. A lot of brothers don't realize that. As the man of the house, you represent Jesus Christ. Your wife represents the church, the disciples, the followers. A lot of Israelites don't even understand that. They curse the woman. When did Christ curse us and tell us to get the hell away from him? He didn't do that to us. He dealt patiently with us, right? We got to deal the same way with our women. Same way with our woman. But it's hard for a Negro. A Negro who, who hates responsibility. Okay, give me that first one. You got Poppy giving me the sign of the cross over there. First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 13. Clear there. If the woman refuses to obey this Bible, the Bible says, escape from her. You understand? And the Bible don't contradict itself. So now when we go back to 1 Corinthians 7, go right back there, verse 12. Verse 12. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. 
If any brother has a wife and that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him. So now, based on what we read in Ecclesiastes 7.26, we can balance that out. Because Ecclesiastes says to do what with her? If she don't obey. Get rid of her. So Paul ain't contradicting God. He said, if she's, she don't believe, but she's pleased to dwell with you. She may not, she don't, she, she, she don't believe the Bible, but she said, listen, honey, mommy, no more Christmas, okay? She says, why, Bobby? She says, that's not in the Bible. Ah, what about I want to do it anyway? Nah, ma, we're going to celebrate Hanukkah. We're going to celebrate Passover. She said, okay, Bobby, I love you. I'm going to do it anyway. I don't believe it, but I'm going to do it just because you want to do it. What? You don't want me to cook pork for you no more? All right, all right, Bobby, I'm going to do that because I want to keep the family together. That's what pleased to dwell with you is. That's because the Bible says it, just because you said it, okay? That's what keeps the family together. Can you read that bottom part of 13? Verse 13. Uh, else were your children unclean. You hear that part? Else were your children unclean? Because let's say you, you believe, right? And your wife says, I don't believe. Read that part again. Else were your children unclean. If you stay with a woman who does not believe and refuses to do what you say, your children would be what? Else were your children unclean. Meaning confused because she's going to teach the children Christmas. You're going to teach them Feast of Dedication, Hanukkah. You're going to teach Passover. She's going to teach Easter. And the child is like, uh, I don't get it. I'm just confused. you telling your little daughter, don't dress like a man. Your woman is saying, dress like a man. Show your butt. Show your vagina. The child is what? Else were your children unclean. You understand that, bro? What? So, never let a Because you're what? The head of the house, right? A lot of brothers will give me that first Corinthians 11. A lot of brothers don't realize that. A lot of brothers don't realize that as a man, you are the head of the house. First Corinthians 11 and verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. So as the head of the house, you must command your house. So that's what Paul is letting you know. About if she don't believe, but she's pleased as well with you, you're the head of the house. You lay the rules in the house. You want to tell her what to do. No, no, no. We're not going to the club, ma. We're not smoking weed and marijuana. No more, ma. That's, that's over. You understand? That's what the head of the house does. Controls it. And if the woman will not listen to you, and she want to call 911 on you, leave a black or Latino self alone. That's why you got all these single women out here. Because they hate to be obedient to their husband. Read it again. What God says. But I will have you know that the head of every man is you sisters don't look strange when we say that a lot of you black women and single women are single because you got a big mouth and your man will not put up with your big mouth so you single you know when i was young if there was no father in the house you know what they called the kids when we was young bastards bastards the bible calls them the same thing all these single kid parents out here mothers who don't know who their father is all that Bastards. The children are bastards. And a lot of you older black women and black men, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Y'all, that's my age. You know if there's no daddy in the house, the kid was called a bastard. Don't get mad at me. Read it again. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. The, a lot of black women, lad women, they hate that law. They despise, especially if you check out the Christian black and lad women, they're the worst ones. They're the ones that say they believe in Jesus, they love the Lord, but they despise listening to their man. They'll listen to the pastor before they listen to their husband or another woman, but they won't listen to you as the head of the house. Hell no. That's why a lot of them, give me that 2 Thessalonians 3 and 12, I think, that you all might, 2 Thessalonians, that they all might be. 3, 10, 11, it's around there. 2, 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth. Many of our black women, Latin men, women, receive not the love of God's truth. Uh, come on. 
that they might be saved. And, th and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. What is the strong delusion God sending the black women and Latin women? This right here. Now, a lot of them believe, or all of them believe that this is Jesus. But not, not, not near one of them can prove it in the Bible. And like I said to y'all, y'all are angry with us. Call that Christian group right there and bring them here before us. And let's go scripture for scripture. They ain't going to come over here. They sent five little boys over here. But those adults stay way down down there. They know the nah, nah. They know the Israelites. One thing about the Israelites, we know the Bible. We know the Bible. We shall the Lord Read it again. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth. Wait, but damn is in the Bible? What damn? Read that again. That they all might be damned. Who believe not the truth. Mark, what is the truth according to the whole life precept? What is the truth according to the Bible? The word. You mean like Jesus Christ? That's the scripture. Come on, come on, Christian. They don't got the truth, right? Oh, uh, you're coming with it now. How many of you just. Anybody said he said the law. Anybody agree with that? Or disagree? He said the law is the truth. You agree with that? Uh -huh. Let's get to Psalms 119, verse 140. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. You see what God says? The law is the truth. All these Christian religions out here, Mark, I can proudly say, boldly, they're all false. None of them have the truth. Well, you know why? Because none of them deal with God's laws. Not one. Verse 151. Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are truth. You see that? And that's what Christianity refuses to deal with. Like this, for example, some of y'all looking at us strange about why y'all why hanging Jesus on a billboard like that? This is not Jesus Christ. This is El Diablo. This is the devil. This is the devil the Bible speaks of. Hey, you might be the devil for all we know, brother. Yeah, brother. You might be the devil. Black power, brother. Now, this ain't about black power. This is about Israelite power. This is about the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, come on. Oh, yeah, back to Thessalonians. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and 11. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. All these Christians have pleasure in unrighteousness. Every Christian has pleasure in unrighteousness. What do I mean by that? What does God mean by that? For example, the Bible says women should not wear what pertains to men. You see these women wearing pants, I guarantee you they all say that they're Christians. They all say they're Christians, but they will not do what the Bible says. Yeah, they all, all, false, false. Baptist, Pentecostal, give me some more, Roman Catholic. They're all false. Every last one of them. Now, let me ask a question. I see the young man over there, he got, those are your sons? You celebrate Father's Day? Oh, very good. Why don't you celebrate Father's Day? It's not part of the holy day, is that what you said? Yeah. Absolutely right. Now, as fathers, you, Mark, myself, many of we all have children, and the Bible commands us what to do with our children. Because tomorrow, and you know what, you know what, this is the hypocrisy. Let me tell you the hypocrisy. They all gonna be celebrating Father's Day tomorrow, right? A lot of them, Father's Day. And their daddies don't even live at home with them. Ain't no man in the house that's hypocrisy. Hypocrite, or for one day your daddy come home and take you to a movie or have a pizza, but he will not stay home and raise you. Why? You know why? Because your mother. Because your mother got a big mouth. A lot of your mothers are dragons at home. So your father left, and now tomorrow's father's day. I know some of your feelings are getting hurt. Don't worry about that. This is good medicine for you. Now, give me Ephesians 6 and 4. A lot of you fathers out there, myself included, this is what God commands us. Ephesians 6 and verse 4. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4. I want all you brothers who are fathers to listen good. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. And you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That's what every father is commanded to do. You children with no fathers whose father left home, you're bastards. I'm going to tell you straight, you're bastards. 
And your mother will not have the guts to say she ran your daddy out the house. Your mother will not have the goal to tell you the truth. She ran your father out the house. Read it again. But this is what God commands every father. Ephesians 6 and 4. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. What is the wrath we're not to provoke our children to? God's wrath. We're not to raise our children up to, for them to receive God's wrath. But bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. All you fathers, what is the nurture and admonition of the Lord? Your father, what is the nurture and admonition of the Lord? You too. Jesus and ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So again, to you fathers, what is the nurture and admonition of the Lord? Is, uh, is it teaching, teaching in the ways of the Yes, you're I'm telling you. Oh, very good. <laughs> what do you say, Mom? What do you say? I agree. Now, Jesus. He called the whole world. Deuteronomy chapter. This is the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. You see what God says? We are commanded as fathers to teach our children God's commandments. Come on. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. So when you're at home, you're supposed to sit with your sons and your daughters and talk about God's laws. Read. And when thou walkest by the way. And when you walk by the way up and down the streets, your fathers are commanded to teach your children God's commandments. And when thou liest down, and when you lie down to go to sleep, your fathers are commanded to teach your children, discuss God's laws with them. And when thou risest up, and when you wake up in the morning, your children should have God's commandments in their minds and send them to prayers. You know why? That will keep your sons out of jail. That, if you fathers, listen good, you fathers, if you were to teach your sons God's commandments from youth, they would stay out of jail. They wouldn't get hooked up with a no good big mouth woman. That's right. They would not be on drugs. They would not be in a methadone clinic. But because of Christianity, you might say, oh, you can't judge the women or nobody by the way they judge. Give me that 1 Corinthians 2.15. Now, bringing this up for you, Mark, and the young man over there. Because people get sensitive. When they say, how can you look at a woman and say she's disobedient based on the way she dresses? When I see a boy with his pants below his butt showing his underwear, I can tell you he follows some jailhouse custom. Right. He's headed to jail. Or he's a homosexual or both. 1 Corinthians 2.15. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. But he that is spiritual judges all things. So the way we judge, first and foremost, let me explain something to you. Because a lot of people get stupid. They say to us, you can't judge. You ever hear people say that you can't judge? You know what's funny about that? They'll tell the Israelites that. Does the white man judge our people in court every day? Yes. Yes. Yep. Does any of the blacks on the go into court and tell the white man, you can't judge me? No. Not near one of them. That's the hypocrisy of our people. But all we doing is reading the Bible. But they'll tell us, you can't judge us. The white man is sending them to jail. And they don't say nothing. They in court quiet as a mouse. Yes, your honor. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. That's the hypocrisy of blacks and Latinos. Read it again. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. But he that is spiritual judges all things. So the God commands us to judge all things. So when you see a young man with his pants below his butt, that comes from jail. That means he's possibly going to be a homosexual in his life, or he sells drugs, one or the other. That is not a custom for young men to dress like that. Brother, I love you. I love you. I'm not your enemy. I love you. You can bring a man in knowledge, but you cannot make him think. That's right. Okay. We can, our job is to teach you, to show you what God says. You can get angry if you want, but we love you. You are our people. Right. Okay. So read that again for us. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. Meaning if you're keeping God's commandments, 
You're not judged of no man because you're in order with God. You are in order with God. For example, like when I see you, Mark, I'm just order with young men right here. I look at you brothers, and I know that y'all believe. Okay, I know y'all listen. So the first thing I would say before I hear you speak, I would say we gotta come on. I can only judge you based on what? If you never speak, what's the only thing I can judge you on? Your appearance, that's it. I can only go by what I see. Give me numbers 15, 38. That's the only thing. Just like with the women. When I see my sisters who I love, I see the women dressed like men. Some of these women look like whores. I'm sorry. You gotta change. Come on. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel. You Mexicans, you Dominicans, you Latinos, you blacks, you shall not be free. And feed them that they make them bridges in the borders of their garments. You ever see the Native American Indians? They always wore fringes in the borders of their garments. The Aztecs, the Mayans, all wore fringes. Why? Because they are the ancient Hebrews. They are the 12 tribes of Israel. They followed the dress code of God. But guess what? Lo and behold today, we follow the dress code of America. That's what God has a problem with us. Read it again. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. Throughout their generations means forever. Forever. So that's why with us, you'll see us in our, our garments to teach, right? You see fringes in border blue? But even under that, our regular clothes, we have fringes on. Why? Because God said to dress like that. God commanded us to dress like that. Read on. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. That's why when we hear Christians, we say, you Christians don't believe in what God says. Be like the ones over there. They are out of order with the Bible. They won't do anything this Bible says. Nothing. Come on. Verse 39. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. So the fringes have a purpose, that you may look upon the fringes and remember all the commandments. Can you imagine what's soon to come, the prophecy to come, one third of the nation of Israel is going to repent. One third. It's going to rest. Two thirds is going to die. Right. Did y'all know that? That two thirds, two out of every three of our people are going to die? Did you know that, Mark? How do you know that? Where? In the Bible. Where in the Bible? Revelation. Zechariah 13. Zechariah. 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 God gives us all, He gives the 12 tribes of Israel a dress code. Okay? And it's for a reason. You ever know, you ever want to know why women get yeast infections at a high rate? Because the vagina is meant to breathe. That's right. You're supposed to have a dress so that the vagina can breathe. That way you don't get, uh, what do they call that? Yeast infections or the vaginal odors. Vaginal odors. Like a lot of these black women and Latin women got vaginal odors That's right. because the vagina cannot breathe in their pants. That's right. Because they want to dress like men. They want to look like hookers and whores. I'm sorry, sisters. I do love you. Get mad. You gonna, you gonna think that you gonna love, love me in the morning? Come on. The book of Zechariah, chapter 13, verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. You see that? The third shall be left, but two thirds shall be cut off and die. That's what God prophesied. Who the Israelites? You El Salvadorians, you Mexicans. You Dominicans, you're the Israelites the Bible speaks of. You blacks, you West Indians, you are the Israelites. Right. Believe it or not, you've never heard this because your churches have taught you lies from day one. And brother with the blue shirt, if you have a question, come. Brother with the blue shirt, say this, say this. I say the kingdom. The kingdom of God. Have it. Enjoy it. Usted también. Usted también. So he doesn't want to know who he is. That's why the white man destroyed his eyes, that's destroyed his homeland and caused them illegal aliens. Exactly. That's why he does that to you and kicks your, your mothers and fathers out of the country. That's right. You've been so deceived in Christianity that you think that this white man is your friend. Right. You brothers, y'all gonna have a rude awakening. That's right. A rude awakening. It's gonna get worse for your people. You're very welcome, brother. And when the destruction comes, 
As you get disseminated, destroyed, I'm going to say, you're welcome again. And I'm going to say, Buenas noches! Adios, amigo! Adios! Hasta luego! All you Christians have been deceived all your lives. That's right. And we can prove it in the Holy Bible. That's why you Christians are afraid to approach us. You stay at a distance. Because you know we shall break up your shallow ground. 